we've come to the Wildlife Science Center here in Stacy, Minnesota on a nice snowy Minnesota day to see if we can record some more vocalizations of wolves and other animals perhaps like cougars and uh, coyotes. I am Megan Callahan Beckel. I am the Animal Care Coordinator here at the Wildlife Science Center. Um, the Wildlife Science Center is a education and research facility. Uh, we have the largest captive population of wolves in North America, um, as well as mountain lions, black bears, bobcats, foxes, the works. Um, most of the wolves that we have were either removed from some situation they were eating things they shouldn't, or their parents were killed or um, just kind of situations like that, orphaned, not healthy, stuff like that. We also have some animals that were born on site here as part of a reproductive study that we've done trying to benefit the Mexican gray wolf reintroduction. So we use our guys as models for Mexican wolves and then testing the contracept contraceptives and the reversibility of those contraceptives. So we've also worked with Duke University doing behavioral studies and stuff like that. So that's one of the reasons we have so many of these guys is because there's a lot of animals out there that uh, can sometimes do things they're not supposed to. And then we also need these guys as wonderful models for, for some research. Um, we do a lot of programs for children and school groups. And we also train chemical mobilization classes here. So we trained the Yellowstone reintroduction team we trained the Voyagers team, uh, Iowa Royal team. All of those guys came here first to learn how to handle anesthetized wolves before going out and, and handling wild wolves. So, and, and we, uh, we, we've been doing this for a really long time. We started in 1990 um, as a federally funded project and then the federal funding dried up and our executive director, um, her last order was to euthanize the 40 wolves that were there and she and her husband decided that they didn't want to do that. So they started a nonprofit and it's, we've just been growing ever since. We came to the Wildlife Science Center partly because we'd never been and it truly was incredible to be in this place surrounded by over a hundred wolves. This is actually where Rika was born, who then moved up to the International Wolf Center in Ely to become one of their ambassador wolves two years ago, but mainly to try to get more recordings of a wolf and animal vocalizations because we have quite a number in the game, but we always need more because they do get repetitive. It's challenging though, of course, because we are out there in the elements with the wind and the freshly fallen snow, which I thought would be a nice dampening effect. Also turns out that everybody makes a little noise when they walk in the crunchy snow. Of course, one of our goals was to record solo wolf howls, and Megan could trigger howls by howling herself, but when you've got over 100 wolves nearby, it's very hard to get just one wolf to respond. But there were a few who persisted in howling after all the others had stopped, so I'd run over to those and uh, see what I could get. So thank you to Artemis and Aurora and Sherry for your contributions to WolfQuest. So mostly we just followed Megan around as she tried to elicit vocalizations from the animals. And sometimes I just give Megan the portable recording device and let her go and get nice and close. There's one wolf that always challenges her so she could go get some nice growls from him. Give me. grabbing some snacks for the wolves. Um, these smaller items, even if they aren't super excited about eating them, they're fun novel objects. So uh, the behaviors that we can get are pretty cool. You know, they'll pick them up and run around, guard them pretty heavily. So they tend to be a little more growly and, and noisy when they have little small items like this. Our mountain lions, they're about 10 years old now. They were orphaned in the state of Wyoming by a hunter. Mom charged at the hunter and he defended himself. Um, and just a really sweet guy. He brought in this big bundle of kittens to uh, wildlife services. He says, I don't know what to do with these. So um, we got these guys as kittens. Um, they are just wonderful ambassadors. These are two females. Um, we have four mountain lions on site. These two girls and then two girls in another, in another pen. She right there. Yeah. 
Wait, yeah, yeah, antagonist. Now. You know, when I woke up this morning, I did not realize that I would soon be coming face to face with a cougar staring into my eyes over a chunk of food. <laughs> and it's very intimidating. But apparently Mittens here had already eaten recently and so gave up the carcass for her sister Pandora, who did defer at first but quickly moved in and settled in and so we didn't have a lot of action besides some kind of grunting while chewing. And so Megan tried to shake things up a little bit by tugging on that deer leg, making Pandora run. So we got a few more growls out of that, along with some excellent eating sounds. It's a funny job on some days. We're so grateful to Megan and Elizabeth and the others at the Wildlife Science Center who helped us capture these sounds, prompt the animals to make all these different sounds. And these howls and growls and, and other sounds are coming soon, as soon as we get them organized and cleaned up. Coming soon to Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition.